Welcome back to my YouTube channel, Elliot Wave Principal. I'm your host, Shaheen. Now, I'm pretty sure lots of people, lots of you guys had enjoyed the crash that we are actually right now seeing and uh, that we forecasted in uh, last, last weekend's analysis. So, we are going to continue and build on it. We are going to definitely discuss uh, all sorts of instruments that would include Dow Jones, S&P 500, NASDAQ 100, uh, British Pound, Euro, Japanese Yen, uh, Silver, Gold, and uh, crude oil and then we'll also definitely look at Bitcoin so most of the things are working as we thought they would be working um, and I hope that you guys enjoyed the content from last week uh, if you did please give me a thumbs up on this video as well so that it can reach more and more people and it can also benefit the channel as well so let's start today's analysis uh, and uh, let's delete all these lines so you can actually start making some uh, sense now Dow Jones exactly did not move as we thought it would we were expecting for the correction to go in this region and then return in the in the, in that case uh, Dow Jones actually went on and created double top with this one but the major flow that we had is that the uh, the, the we were looking at as an impulsive corrective impulsive corrective or we were looking at it with one with a with B and wave C uh, has uh, come uh, true and we have dropped below so what is we expecting right now? Given the that we have created uh, right now an expanded flat that is more visible to you guys right now, let me bring that quickly back to here. We can call it now wave A, this as wave B, and this as wave C. We have not only completed wave A, which is a zigzag, wave B, which is also zigzag, or you can say a three-wave structure, a three-wave structure, and wave C is a five-wave structure, wave one, two, three, four, and five. Uh, is giving us an indication that we have created a larger um, distribution pattern and this is very very important uh, we have seen massive bear candlesticks today and all of this was included in my previous analysis you got looking at it we were strongly bearish on Dow Jones and that's what happening so what now from over here I believe that we are going to continue massive decline downwards and I have already given you guys target that the whole trend, the initial target for the whole bearish trend is 18,000, all right? And uh, I think that we are in the initial stages of wave three, uh, so it's gonna be continue going down. I'm not expecting a deeper correction in Dow Jones. As far as Dow Jones is concerned, I'm expecting that we have already seen, uh, kind of, well, let me give, give it right over here. We've already seen wave one right over here, Wave 2 is completed and we're going to see stronger wave 3 uh, and 4 and then wave 5 down. Alright. So next few days are going to be very interesting. I'm expecting that next few days are going to continue this uh, bearish strength that we are seeing. So this bearish strength is going to continue in next few days and we'll uh, be able to better label wave 3, 4 and 5 uh, when the, we have seen more correction patterns. As a whole, I'm bearish on Dow Jones. I'm bearish on world indexes. And I've already mentioned it in my previous analysis. Now this one S&P has actually moved in a much better way. We were expecting we were expecting it to form a correction and because we were believing that this correction is complete and that's exactly what we have seen. We have seen uh, impulsive behavior, a corrective behavior and exactly that we are expecting right now. So S&P analysis has uh, stayed more closer to what we are expecting. Once again, we can call it one. I did mention it to you guys that we can definitely call it as wave one. Uh, sorry, wave A right here, and wave B right over here, and wave C right over here. In this case, this pattern is called double three pattern, uh, zigzag structure, zigzag structure, another zigzag structure. But they are moving in a side wave behavior, and now we have uh, uh, an indication that we have smaller wave one and two. So we can consider this as a smaller wave one and a smaller two. And this wave is going to continue crashing downward. This is going to, we are in the middle of three of three right now. So behavior in S&P will uh, stay definitely bearish. Uh, I've already mentioned to you guys what I'm looking at for a potential target right over here. This is our medium term potential, potential target. Uh, maybe it will take us in a year to hit right over here. And a similar way in Dow Jones as well. There is a possibility that it will take us about a year to hit. But once again, if prices are very strongly, there is a possibility that we can actually uh, be bearish in next two, three months and finish this and then move side waves. So both things are exactly possible. Right now, the main thing is the direction of the trend. 
this is in no way a corrective movement this is in no way a corrective movement and uh, you can actually see my previous analysis on my channel and we were expecting this so it's it's really amazing if some of you guys actually took benefit of it uh, Nasdaq is once again strongly bearish we can see that we have already mentioned it to you guys uh, that we are seeing a pattern uh, similar to as an S&P we have an impulsive move and A B and C which is a double three pattern we have come created a smaller wave one and a smaller two and right now we are in the wave of three of three the whole reason I'm not I do not do labeling is is a lot of uh, time I have to quickly switch on and off so it, it allows me to uh, it allows me to have that flexibility and one of other thing that I was not doing is that a lot of people can easily copy your content so I was trying to uh, stay away from uh, so when I'm, I'm talking I hope fully that you guys are well aware of wave A wave B and wave C structure we have dulls, we have double top right over here and on a four hourly time frame we have also corrective pattern that's exactly what we're expecting in our previous analysis that a corrective structure and we should continue the bearish trend downward once again you can refer back to my previous analysis if you did like my previous analysis and you're benefiting it from it please do hit that thumbs up button uh, so we can seek spread it to more and more people now British pound is if we are right now heading to Forex so Forex is you need to understand that uh, the trend we were expecting to go deeper in British pound has not happened so what now we are definitely looking uh, going to go look into a couple of things and I want to mention right over here uh, first of all, uh, the prices definitely have quite a bit of room to go down right now. I was expecting that we will see have we have seen initial price movement downward. We will see the deeper price movement, and then we will probably see not so deeper price movement. But the correction is proving different. There are a couple of things that can happen right now. There is still a possibility that we can actually convert that to uh, expanded flat. Alright, because we are going to meet an important resistance area in this one right over here. So I'm not giving you a trading signal in this one or uh, I'm waiting for a couple of things to happen. A couple of things can happen possible right now. That with this is wave A and this is right now going through wave B. In this case we can see a stronger price movement in this way right over here giving us a double top and then we can reverse. That will be our option. Um, that will be our trade to go bearish right now there is no trade right now we have already moved bearish quite a bit and there is a possibility we will have to a little more room left downward but once again it's not an intelligent trade we need uh, to create a proper setup for the trade other uh, possibility that can happen here is is that when this price movement has completed and uh, then we can see some sort of a smaller time frame um, price movement in this way all right both things are possible and when this thing is happened that will give us an opportunity to go bearish as well too all right in that if this happens then we are definitely looking uh, for a stronger bearish action that we have seen in Japanese yen all right once again but if this happens in that case uh, we should expect for this to continue like this right over here give us something like this all right so once again we are waiting on British pound to give us uh, a proper signal to go be uh, to go and trade the final bearish movement that uh, this mass up has created right over here so once again the way we are either gonna we are waiting for the prices to come down a little and there's a possibility that we can go all the way up right over here creating a double top forming an expanded flat right over here another possibility is that the correction completed right over here this is another impulsive movement this should give us uh, a break uh, a corrective price movement when that corrective price movement happen we should be trading downward as well so we are going to keep close eye on British uh, British Brown I will see if I can uh, come back in the in the early stage of next week or the, in the middle of the next week to uh, provide an update on British Brown in Euro I already mentioned it to you guys we were I was staying on the sidelines there is a huge massive we have seen sharply prices going up and then coming down so the correction that you are staying uh, expecting in the price in our last analysis is that there is a possibility that this could be flat or this could be a zigzag right now we are seeing that that correction that we thought uh, was either going to now have a more uh, signal that is expected to be a flat correction we can clearly see that this is a support zone right over here I'm expecting that prices would when this price movement is finished 
when this down price movement is finished it would allow prices to go up and create a double top with this one creating a flat correction in that time we can definitely go bearish and there is a possibility that we will see uh, once again a stronger weakness as we have seen in Japanese Gen alright uh, just in case we if the price go all the way down deeper right over here in that case one down price movement is expected in that case the price shall go down still but we are not expecting it to go much deeper so I hope this is clear but right now we are expecting it to be more kind of uh, a double top which is a flat pattern and give us a bearish uh, setup for euro in next week sometime <coughs> <coughs> I'm sorry my throat is a little uh, a little dry from uh, from fasting and uh, um, bear with me <coughs> All right. So Japanese yen in, the, in uh, my previous analysis, I told you guys that there is a possibility that if prices came down right over here, we are going to go bullish right over here. Instead, prices did not come downward, so that uh, the uh, that trading setup did not trigger. Right now, there is couple possibilities. I on a weekly time frame, I did indicate a couple of resistance points to you guys. First one is 135, and the next one is right over right over here too. So let me see if I can bring it right over here. So, so a couple of clear resistance points. Once again, we need to look in in Japanese yen, see if it can provide us a, a trading opportunity because a pullback has to happen. I'm looking at it in a couple of possibilities that we have still this as wave A, this as wave B, and then what we're expecting in British pound, there is a possibility that we can see this still right over here in uh, Japanese yen. In that case, when a double bottom has formed, we will go long on the chart, right? Which will make Japanese yen more bearish in next uh, few uh, trading days when this opportunity is complete. And there's another possibility that we have completed the correction right over here, and this is a whole impulsive wave. In that case, the correction shall come right over here in this regard, in in this area. All right. So in both cases, we are waiting for the prices to give us a pullback, either right over here or right over here. When that pullback happens, uh, we'll definitely have to use our analysis uh, to see when that pullback is complete. In that case, we can go long on the chart, meaning that Japanese yen will be more bearish. I, in, in case you guys missed my longer term weekly analysis, uh, please do and, and check it out. It's very interesting on Japanese Gen and it gives you analysis on uh, where we are looking at Japanese Gen in a longer time frame analysis. But I'm expecting that next few days are going to be very interesting in Japanese Gen. If the pullbacks are once again right come over here, this will give us an opportunity to go over. And if the pullback is a possibility, it can come all the way right over here. In that case, we will also have an opportunity to go long on the chart. Now silver has gone deeper than we expected. We were expecting that the correction would happen, which it did happen. But in case we uh, we haven't seen the the reversal that we were expecting to go long in silver, and I did get a question on uh, in the comment section about asking about silver. So I'm still bullish as far as the major price money is concerned. I'm still bullish on uh, on uh, silver and on gold as well. Now before we can actually head on and talk about more. A price section on gold and silver I want you to refer back to a couple of charts which are gonna be de definitely helpful now as you guys can see that we have seen a lot of gibberish price movement we were not sure uh, that we were gonna see a new top but when the decidedly price movement happened we saw this and a similar reaction a similar act price action is expected in silver and gold that's the whole reason I'm expecting I'm staying bullish on both of them gold and silver so right now there is a possibility that we are talking about some more correction and downward hourly time frame let me have a look there's a possibility that we might have already completed the price action but gold is before I can discuss uh, silver let me discuss gold this will give us more opportunity let's let's continue with silver because I don't want to confuse you guys okay so first of all, I want to give you guys an indication that the support line, this support line is right now very important. 
as because this is giving us quite a bit of room for the prices to move in the side wave it wants to and come down more so a break of this trend line would definitely give us an indication that we are going to go long and we shall wait a little more for our pattern to complete there is a possibility that we might go a little down in that case keep an eye on this support structure that we are support zone that we have here so strength a lot of buying ha happen in that zone I'm still uh, bullish on silver let me clear that and nothing has changed and one thing led to another and then we have seen a deeper price action but once again as far as the larger time frame analysis is concerned I am not bearish on silver I'm waiting for the prices to give some more structures and that will give us an indication what we are looking at right now but as far as the price movement is concerned we have this area as a horizontal uh, resistance for the prices to go up I do not want to use this one there's a possibility that we can see some sort of a short time frame uh, expanded flat and I do want do not want to use this one therefore so a horizontal support is quite a way and the diagonal support is quite nearby so I'm expecting that diagonal support would be crossed before this cr gets crossed all right we'll keep a close eye as far as the analysis for the next week I'm definitely bullish on silver once again please keep an eye on this area on this area and on this area this is going to be triple bottom support on a larger time frame which is uh, quite a bit away from so we're talking about quite a, a long period of time right over here therefore this support zone is extremely extremely important and I'm expecting that right now silver is being pushed down and anytime it can start going up because as soon as people will realize that stock market crash is happening we're gonna see a lot of buyers come in and take benefit of this particular price movement right over here so once again I'm bullish on silver price pattern is a little more clear on gold uh, we were expecting this as wave A wave B and wave C of an expanded flat and I gave you guys a couple of targets right right, right over here I myself God was thinking that this should be enough and this should take the prices up right over here but that did not happen and right now some of you guys who are aware of Elliott wave analysis can now probably see an ending diagonal that we are seeing so this is still wave 1 and 2 or we can still consider it as whole impulsive action just don't ask how I'm gonna um, label that so right there's a possibility that we can see prices to go up create a wave 4 and come down right over here so this is one of the possibility that we are looking at right now horizontal support uh, horizontal resistance lies at 1956 definitely a break of 1956 will be an indication that we are in the middle of or in the early stages of wave 3 and that will be a stronger price movement that we are seeing in, uh, in, in the stock market right now so once the, the, we do see prices go up and come down we can definitely bring it down uh, on the on the top of wave 4 and we can definitely combine wave 2 and wave 4 to give us a uh, proper uh, zone area for the, the diagonal support right now this is the one we start off right over here I'm considering this as wave 1 and this whole as wave 2 this as wave 3 and I'm expecting that we are going to go go up and come down if that does not happen and a break takes or oh, takes place in that case uh, we are definitely bullish on gold so I'm clearly bullish on uh, gold and silver for the next week I'm I'm aware of it that we are expecting for the prices to go up that did not happen and it has taken a lot of time but I'm expecting that next week would be really good for uh, for gold and silver now a lot of people and including myself we are expecting for the prices to create a double top but the break has already happened we can see that the horizontal support that was right over here also got broken and then we have retested it right over here so it gives you guys some clue that we have moved down and we have retested it and the second one has broken but we can see a lot of noise happening so I'm not gonna say that it's gonna go up right over here it will go up it won't go up there's a possibility what I'm telling you is that we have completed wave 1 
we have completed the correction that actually started right over here a lot of people are gonna say oh there is a lot of short uh, truncation yeah I'm considering that a lot of truncation is happened already and I am well aware of it uh, so I'm considering right now that the bearish action will continue in crude oil in next week giving us an indication that the stronger price movement should indicate a more stronger price movement as compared to this whole price movement that we have seen so starting from top to bottom you can measure it and I'm expecting that this leg would be longer than the wave one right over here and when we'll talk more after that happens so in this uh, as for as far as crude oil is concerned I'm bearish on crude oil and I think the reference point that we can use for crude oil is 109 right over here if it is not a good trading setup you might want to wait for a correction there is a possibility that we can see something like this if that happens a double top happens on the on the support that will be a very good signal for crude oil to go short so I'm short I'm bearish on crude oil, crude oil. Bitcoin and uh, we have seen price action that you we were expecting uh, I gave you guys a bearish call in Bitcoin and I told you guys that this pattern that actually started right from over here completion of this tar uh, on, a, on a daily time frame the occurrence of this pattern on a daily time frame is crucial and then we have seen that prices have fallen and prices have kind of retested this area and the fall has continued from that top right over here so I'm bearish on uh, Bitcoin as long as the prices do not enter in this range alright let's say if the prices have to enter in this range once again that would give us an indication that our analysis on Bitcoin is not right so I told you guys that I'm looking for a major bearish price action in Bitcoin and uh, it will be really lucky for some of us who didn't actually I didn't buy Bitcoin so I want to buy back again into cryptocurrency when it's falling at a at a lower level so that will be a very good chance once again this is going to be if the prices can actually get into this territory that will indicate that the pattern is yet not complete that actually started right from over here in that case we would say that okay uh, then we can say that wave A, wave B and wave C happen and then the price would happen give us one more push upward before moving down so that's why this area is very important uh, for Bitcoin that it stays low below this area uh, below this area especially so once again, wish you good luck with your trading for the next week. If you did like my content, please press the thumbs up. And uh, I do read all sorts of comments, uh, whether they would be <laughs> not nice or very nice. So all sorts of comments are read, and I try to answer all of them. Wish you good luck with your trading next week. Have a good one, and bye-bye.